Hey guys, uh, recently my uncle passed away. On the bright side, I've inherited a lot of hamsters in a short period of time. At first, I thought I could just sell them online and buy a new power supply, but I soon found out X Hamster is not a rodent-based marketplace, which got me thinking, how many hamsters would it take to power my PC? So today, we're going to be evaluating the horsepower, I mean hamster power, needed to run modern electronics. Let's start with the simple light bulb. I think this one's broken. I consulted Google, and as of right now, the best means of harvesting hamster power is a hamster wheel. A close second would be matrix batteries, but my ethics board is too blue pill to see the benefit of hamster integration. So let's work with what we got. Surprisingly, not much research has been done in the field, but I did manage to find a form user who reported that his hamster was able to sustain around 0.15 watts. But what is a watt? Well, a watt is the product of voltage and an amp. Voltage is the electric potential difference between two points, essentially the push that makes an electric charge move. Think of it like water pressure in a pipe, while amps is the rate at which the charge flows. Multiply them together and you get power, the rate at which energy is transferred. So if we got 67 hamster wheels going, we could power an LED light bulb. Not too bad. But if I wanted to power my microwave, I'd need 6,000 hamsters. Uh, has anyone seen hamsters? Taro. Microwaves weren't originally made for heating up hot pockets. Prior to commercial microwaves, scientist James Lovelock faced an issue in his research. How could he uniformly and ethically heat up a cryogenically frozen hamster? I, I guess this was one of those big problems back in the day, but his solution was a primitive microwave. It was extremely successful and would go on to inspire an entire genre of live leak videos, which can be accessed on computers. Now, I'm rocking an RTX 4070 S and an i9 12900K with these other specs. And if we do a quick number crunch, my PC coasts at around 100 watts when idle, but can climb up to 450 watts if I'm running Honey Pop 2 on max graphics, meaning I would need about 3,000 hamsters to game with only hamster wheels. My FPS is dropping below 60! Work faster! But we're getting ahead of ourselves. How do we go from hamster wheels to energy? Well, we need to harness the energy from rotation via a generator and then transfer that power to a battery. Now, connect a small DC motor shaft to each hamster wheel and have the motors linked up to a power bank. Obviously, hamster power comes with some overhead costs. It turns out you actually need to feed these things. Unfortunately, this proves to be a huge problem with hamster-powered computing. Hamsters eat about 0.01 pounds of food per day, and since we're feeding an army, we gotta buy in bulk. Five pounds of hamster food costs around $25, so to feed 3,000 hamsters for one day, it would be 150 bucks. And we haven't even considered the price of infrastructure. As of 20 2025, hamster wheels cost around $10, and the motors would be another two. We also need to buy power banks to store the energy to ensure we're receiving a stable amount. For reference, to play Counter-Strike on my rig for 24 hours and drop 5k in ELO, around 12.7 kilowatt hours is needed, assuming our batteries are running at about 85% efficiency. Tesla Powerwall 3s can store about 13.5 kilowatt hours and come in at around $15,400. Hamster wheels and motors would be an additional $36,000 for 3,000 hamsters. Coming in at the reasonable price of $51,400, our hamster reactor could be built. A small price to pay in the name of science. The only downside being that it would take 28 hours to power the battery. If you're impatient, you need to procure 84 1,667 hamsters to charge the battery in one hour. In 2022, an average U.S. home used 10,791 kilowatt hours in a year, which is equivalent to 8,213 hamsters running 24-7, which I haven't been able to get them to do ever since they unionized. There's gotta be a more efficient and ethical way to harvest hamster power. Let's try burning them. 
I know a majority of you guys are probably pretty STUPID judging by the fact that you haven't subscribed yet. So let me break down how thermal power is generated. Carbon rich remains of ancient plants and animals are compressed under immense heat and pressure over millions of years. Over their lifetime, organisms captured and stored the sun's energy in their chemical bonds, making them potent with potential energy. When we burn these fuels, carbon and hydrogen atoms break apart, forming stable bonds with oxygen that produce CO2 and water and release stored energy as heat. Heat is the driving force behind thermal power generation. Even nuclear reactors work the same way but generate heat through nuclear fission instead of fire. Heat boils water into high pressured steam which is directed at blades of a turbine making it spin. The turbine is connected to a generator which uses facts and logic to convert mechanical motion into an electric current. So I think we should try throwing hamsters into our boiler. Humanity already uses biomass to generate power. And as far as I'm aware, no one has tried burning hamsters yet. So this is purely speculation. Say a hamster weighs 100 grams. The problem is about 70% of that is just useless water. But once you dry them out, you're left with 30 grams of dried biofuel. Since dried biomass carries about 18 kilojoules per gram, a fully combusted hamster would yield around 0.15 kilowatt hours. But turbines aren't perfect. Assuming 30% efficiency, that figure drops down to about 0.045 kilowatt hours per hamster. Or in other words, one hamster could power my PC for about five minutes before I'd have to toss in another. To game for a full 24 hours, you need a total of 283 hamsters. Not bad at all. That's 90% less hamsters than using the hamster wheel method. Now, if burning a few hundred hamsters can power my PC for a day, imagine scaling that up way up, like to astronomical levels, because these little guys breed like crazy, and at the end of the day, the ultimate source of energy isn't a hamster boiler, it's the sun. Every watt used to power our casinos, spin our turbines, and grow our food comes from a giant fusion reactor burning in the sky. So how many hamsters would it take to make a sun? At the sun's core, hydrogen nuclei fuse together to form helium, releasing enormous amounts of energy in the process. Hamsters are only made up of about 10 grams of hydrogen and don't have any helium, so fusion is impossible. But with enough hamsters, we can make a black hole. There's a theoretical megastructure similar to a Dyson sphere, but instead of capturing a star, it encases a spinning black hole with mirrors. In a nutshell, Shell, super radiance scattering off a black hole is amplified by the surrounding mirror, causing waves to grow exponentially. If the megastructure is opened, waves could be captured by a giant electromagnetic antenna, converting a fraction of the black hole's rotational energy into power. A black hole forms when an object is compressed within its Schwarzschild radius. There isn't a specific mass threshold, but the smallest black holes observed are roughly three solar masses, equivalent to about 20 trillion quintillion hamsters. So if we got all of those hamsters together, compressed them enough, and built a black hole reactor around it, we would have enough power to fuel my PC indefinitely. So there you have it. We've learned that hamsters are cute, but are also an efficient source of power that will undoubtedly carry us into the age of information. With me as the world's primary supplier, of course. If you found this video interesting, please take a look at my backlog. I have a bunch of videos. Oh, oh my god, look at this one. This one's uh, about if farts can kill you. That's, wow, I'm gonna click on that one.